Oh my god, you guys, I had such a day. I was at work, and around 4 o'clock I realized that I hadn't seen their indoor cat in a while, and she's really aging and not doing so great. She's pretty frail and skinny and kind of timid, and she's not used to going outside at all. So when I realized that I hadn't heard her or seen her since maybe I think I was able to pinpoint that she was like yelping to get into the bathroom to get to her water around one or two. That was the last time I remembered seeing her for sure. So, <laughs> uh, there's an animal conflict right behind me. So, uh, yeah, I was at work and I realized I couldn't find their cat and I was just panicking because I don't want their cat to get hurt, of course. I don't want their cat to be wandering around the neighborhood and it's getting dark. And so I texted them and I said, I can't find Cassie. Is there any special place that she's been hiding recently? Like, does she like to go anywhere? And they said, check our closet, da da da. And I did, and I couldn't find her. I was shaking her treats, and I was like tapping the cat food can. And I went outside, and I talked to the neighbors who were outside, and I was like, if you see her, you know. And they checked their backyard. They said, we haven't seen her. And I was just absolutely freaking out that I had potentially let their cat wander out to die. And I only had the door open for like five seconds, literally five seconds while I was watering the plants on the porch. And then I closed it and I don't remember her sneaking past me, but the problem is she oftentimes will try to get past you. If you open the door for UPS or whatever, she'll just like run right past you. So she's a flight risk and I didn't think I had let her go. I was like 99.9% .9 sure that she hadn't gotten out, but I was just panicking that maybe she did and I was responsible and... I thought, you know, they're going to fire you or they're going to resent you forever. And if not, like, you're going to have to quit because this is just a heinous thing to have done. And I was really, really upset. And I don't know, I was just sitting there looking outside and just scanning the whole street. And every time someone would go by, I would, like, you know, is Cassie around them? Is she, you know, under a car? I checked everywhere. I hand wrote out, like, ten different notes that say, like, Hi, our cat escaped, you know, this address, last seen at 2 p.m., black, short-haired, approximately nine pounds. I wrote it out, like I wrote both their phone numbers on it, you know, please call if you see her, the date, everything, and then, yeah, my work dad boss pulled up and came inside. It took him maybe all of five minutes, and he said, oh, she's in our hamper. So I had just, like, worried them at work, and yeah, I was worrying myself sick, and then she just I don't know how she did this, old Cassie had jumped three feet into their like circular clothes hamper and was just nestled in some clothes and I didn't even know that she could do that. So Cassie is fine, everything is good, I, you know, went into panic mode for no reason and I just am so glad to come home and snuggle with my cat and she's an outdoor cat, she's very street smart, I know that she isn't going to wander in the street and get hit by a car, she isn't going to get to a fight if she's just a raccoon or a skunk or something, she's very even-tempered and very reliable I know that she's gonna come back even if I go to like a friend's house and I take her with me because I'm staying over that weekend like she just goes out to the backyard and always comes back she seems to be so adaptable and so just dependable that she's gonna figure out where she is and that she shouldn't leave that area she just she's a sweetheart and she's on the bed right now so I'm gonna grab her for you guys Here's Tea Tree. Here she is. This is my baby. I found her. I found her in a small tree. And that was back in like 2009, I think, right, Monkey? So this is Tea Tree. She's adorable. I love her so much. She is the best cat ever. She's not destructive. She's not like nagging of my attention. She's good with other animals, and I don't know, she's just perfect. She doesn't, like, shred stuff or meow or even throw up in the house, which I know is not their fault, but some cats are just really high maintenance. She's not at all. And, yeah, she's good pretty much anywhere. If she has a window that she can get out and come back in, that's what she's going to do. She prefers to just, like, be left alone. She's independent, but she loves to snuggle on my chest. I wake up with her, like, curled up against me all the time. She's an awesome cat, and I love dogs, I love cats, I love all animals, but this cat means so much to me. I was living in a work exchange, so I was doing minimal hours, like 15 hours a week in exchange for my place, and that was a while back, I guess five, four and a half, five years ago, 
and I had an office job part-time, a nanny job part-time, and I had my live-in job. And when I found this cat, I knew that I wanted to keep her, but I couldn't have her where I was living. So I ended up getting an apartment and quitting that job, and so I could keep her. I like signed up for an $800 a month lease for a two bedroom, granted, but I just, I love her and I committed to having her. I tried very hard to find her a good home when I first got her. I put up flyers all around and I said, here's this cat. I wrote a Craigslist ad. I put it up all on Facebook. I said, if anybody wants this cat or knows whose cat this is and nope, she was definitely a stray, but she was very sweet. She wasn't feral at all. She was such a sweet baby that I just fell in love with her and I already had my rabbit Brer so I had tea tree and Brer and we were all together for a good four years and we lost Brer last year and that was really hard but I still have tea tree and I love her and I'm hoping to give her a good life on the farm. I always think about how much she's gonna love climbing trees and running around in the meadow and chasing butterflies and I really want that for her. I want her to be away from cars and violence and just people who are up to no good. I want her to be in like such a good environment and I can't wait to have that myself and not have to worry about bicycle theft and homelessness and people being sad and upset and mean to each other. I just want to be in like a place where everyone has abundance and has love and respect for one another and I want that for my pets and I want to adopt so many animals. I want to take in like liberated animals and animals that have been abandoned and I want to open this sanctuary and create great produce and I can't believe this all evolved from talking about, I swear to god I came on only to talk about the Cassie work situation just to get it all out there and vent but yeah. That makes me think about Phil, who's the cat that I found wandering around a few months ago. I posted about this, but I never talked about it. So here's my cat story, another one. I seem to attract stray animals all the time, and I always try to stop and take them in. Even if I'm on my way to class or whatever, I always try to stop. Even if I'm biking and I have no way of helping them, really, I try to, like, feed them or see their collar just to figure out what's going on. So... I was getting home from work, which is like 9 to 5.30, and then I also have class from like 6 to 10, so I was biking, and I finally got back, and I just wanted to like get into bed and watch a show and pass out, and I hear this little cat, and he's following me and like wandering through my legs, and every time I bent down to pick him up, he would run away, and he wouldn't leave me alone, though. He followed me for like a block and a half, and I was thinking to myself... You know, this cat obviously wants help but is scared of me, so I, like, sat down and committed to him getting back to his people wherever they were. So he finally kind of came over to me and, like, did the thing where they slink past you and I just grabbed him and I would not let go. And I looked at his collar and it said that he was from a street, like, da -da -da, the equivalent of maybe 14 blocks this way and, like, four blocks that way so he was more than a mile from home and he seemed lost as f and I was just like this cat is never gonna find his way home so I put him because I was biking in my jacket and I buttoned it up and I held him with one hand and I was biking with the other hand and I biked him and it took me forever because it was very wobbly and of course my phone died at like 20% I have no idea how this happened but I looked down to use it and it had been at 20 and then all of a sudden it was just dead so I got to their house at like 11 o'clock at night and I was like, da 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 and the guy came out, and I was like, there's your cat, and I just dumped him out into their, like, hallway. And the guy was like, oh, thanks. And, like, that was it. And I was like, oh, you know, just to tell you, he was, like, maybe 20 blocks down the street. And the guy was like, oh, wow, okay, well, you know, thank you. And I was on my way, so. Good deed. The guy didn't even seem to care that much, but whatever. I potentially helped a cat. And today I didn't help a cat, but I didn't lose a cat. And hopefully T.G. never gets lost because I love her so much. And yeah, if you can have an animal because you can afford it or the place that you're at lets you have pets or you just have the energy and the love to give to an animal, you should adopt one. I really recommend having an animal around you because they are so amazing. Like, it's a big... It's a big time suck, kind of. You know, to have a dog, you have to wake up and walk it, and you have to play with it all the time, and you have to accommodate it and love it and have it be in your life, and you have to come home on time. You can't go out with your friends spontaneously. You have to walk the dog, unless you have a roommate who's going to take it or something. But 
it's a huge commitment, but they give you so much more back. And there are so many animals out there who need a home. So if you're able to, I really recommend it. They just, it's like an unconditional love. And they have such funny, quirky, idiosyncratic personalities. And it's, it's just a light in your life. And it's something to look forward to. And everyone I know who has a pet just is so happy about it and loves them so if you are lonely or if you're not or if you're looking for something new or if you're looking to give your attention to you should consider getting an animal I think and the pound would love to see you and if not you could foster an animal for a few weeks you could have a puppy or something and then that puppy could get rehomed so there are lots of different levels of commitment you could go to the local ASPCA and walk dogs on the weekend if you have a day off and there's so many things you can do that involve animals. You can donate to places like Farm Sanctuary. Uh, there are places all around the country that help animals, and you can look them up. You can definitely find them on homesteading. I have favorited a bunch of pages that work with animals. So stay tuned. I'm going to be one of those pages really soon. Not just a page, but I'm going to be one of those organizations that has animals. And yes. That is the huge rant, and it is done now, and I hope you have a great new year. It is the 2nd of January. I can't believe it's already 2014. It's crazy, but I love you guys. I'll talk to you later, and this was really long. Sorry. Love you. Bye.